The big inspiration for my current work is in the field of gene therapy, a technique where you try to remedy genetic disorders by getting genes into cells. I'm Jennifer Lacer, and I'm a postdoctoral associate here at the University of Minnesota. Getting genes into cells is difficult for a lot of reasons. So there's been a lot of interest in polymers, and these polymers can sort of join up with DNA and mask the characteristics that make it hard to get DNA into a cell. We're really trying to understand the physics of that interaction so that we understand what knobs to tweak. It is really exciting new knowledge that we're developing every day in the lab. Jennifer Laser is brilliant, she's poised, she's creative. What she developed in my group is absolutely new and unique. Um, people now in other parts of the world are mimicking what she's done. I think I've always been a scientist and I've always been interested in science. A lot of it probably came from working with my dad growing up. He's always been very big on math and science and making it fun and making it approachable. It was never a question of, I'm a girl. It was, you're good at math, you're joining the math team. I love ballet because it's an escape and it's a chance for me to get out of my lab mindset, focus on something else, and sometimes I solve problems in the background. I started dancing ballet when I was maybe four and a half years old. By the time I graduated from high school, I was taking about 15 hours of ballet classes a week. Um, and that's really something that imposes a lot of discipline on you. In the Twin Cities, I've found a couple of really great groups to dance with. A lot of other scientists are dancers. I feel like I've had so many mentors who have encouraged me along the way. Um, I've never had anyone tell me, oh, you can't do this, you're a girl. I've never heard that. The mentoring interaction in my current lab can take a lot of forms. I really love the moment when students grasp a concept that they didn't get before. I do feel like the face of science is changing this is not your 80-year-old guy with frizzy hair in a lab coat. These are young, engaged people, men and women, who are doing science, and this could be you.